In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to use Google Sheets to quickly create histograms from data. So we can all share our data the same place and then analyze it and get our results. Now, the idea of a histogram is to take a bunch of data that we have uh, over here and make a picture out of it that lets us see if there's really uh, a pattern or trend in the data. Now, this is not a scatter plot where we're looking for a relationship between two variables, but rather a histogram which shows us um, how the data varies based on bin size. Now it's pretty easy to get a chart so I'm just going to go ahead and highlight the data I want. Now you notice I have team numbers over here that tells me whose data it is but what I just highlighted is the change in mass and that's actually the data I want to create a histogram of. So I highlighted it and I'm going to click insert and chart. Uh, and Google is not going to instantly pick a histogram. Instead it picked a column chart. I don't want that so I just clicked on chart type and I'm going to scroll down to other and I'm gonna pick this one right here which is a histogram chart. Now Google uh, actually has some default stuff that it does uh, that we want to change. Um, it picked our bin size, we want to manipulate our bin size, it put in this silly legend, we want to get rid of that and it did not label our axes and we want to do all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the customize bar and we're going to change some things. So first thing is under histogram. It says bucket size. That's Remember that's the size of these bins where our data is going. We want to manipulate that and I'm going to change it from auto to 0.02. Okay? When I change it to 0.02 you can see we get a lot more bins. Now this would be easier to see if I didn't have this legend right here. So I'm going to click the legend and it pulls up this side of my uh, customization and instead of the right position I'm going to say none. Now it's gone and my graph just got bigger so I can more easily read my data. Now if you look it's actually labeling the edges of my bins. So this bin that has the most data in it goes from negative 0.01 to 0.01. But I have no idea what that is because it did not put a title on my chart. So over here I'm going to go to chart in axes titles and instead of a chart title, I'm going to go to the horizontal axis title. The horizontal axis title, that is showing me change in mass, and I put my label of grams there. Okay? And now I do have uh, a title on my horizontal axis. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to add one to the vertical axis, and this is just going to be count, because it's telling me how many measurements fall in that range. Now I have a histogram that actually shows me some data. I can see that uh, between a mass change of negative 0.01 and 0.01 grams, there were seven measurements. Uh, so the majority of our measurements show a mass change of essentially zero. Um, there's a few of them that show a negative mass change, a few of them that show a positive mass change. Now this gives me a pretty good representation of the data. It shows that it's actually mostly concentrated around zero, and then there's a few of these that are spread out away from zero. If I wanted to make this so it showed less change uh, and didn't quite break down that data as much, I could change my bin size from or bucket size from 0 0.02 to say, uh, point one. And you'll notice now all of my data fits into three different buckets. Uh, and now I've got 16 measurements that are between negative 0.05 and 0.05, all centered around zero. So I've done that and I decreased how much variation that my histogram shows. It makes it look like the data is more concentrated than it might actually have been in real life. I could also go to the other extreme and say, well, let's go 0 0.01. And now you can see I've got more spread in my data. So it's a matter of picking the bucket size that makes the most sense. And since our balances are fairly accurate, um, we could say uh, plus or minus 0.02 grams, it does make sense to use 0.02 for our bucket size. Once we have all that, I can use my histogram to draw conclusions. I can say the majority of the measurements were centered around a mass change of zero, uh, which leads us to conclude that the change in mass in general was close to zero or there was no change in mass for this particular experiment.